These next problems are what we call multi-step energy problems. You know it's a multi-step problem if the temperature range they give you in the problem crosses over the melting point or boiling point temperatures. So if that happens, we have to account for both temperature changes and phase changes. So let's see an example. This first one wants to know how much heat it would take to get a five gram piece of ice to go from negative 10 degrees to positive 10 degrees. And it gives you a little hint. It says, what change of state happens here? Well, water, you might know, has a freezing point or a melting point, just depending on how you think about it, of zero degrees Celsius. That happens right in the middle of this problem. Now, if you weren't sure, you could always look back at your energy chart and determine a substance's melting point or boiling point temperatures. So we have water's melting point right here. So we can see that we're crossing over that melting point in the middle of the problem. Anytime that happens, um, where you're crossing over the melting point or the boiling point, you're gonna have what we call a multi-step problem. There's a few different parts to it. So, the first thing that you're going to do when you get a problem like this is draw a rough sketch of that graph that we were just looking at, where it goes up, over, up, over, up. You're going to put the substance's melting points and boiling points on the graph first. So when you look at water's melting point and boiling point, water melts at zero. So I'm gonna say this flat part of the graph is zero degrees and water boils at 100. So the first things that go on your little sketch of the graph are melting point and boiling point. The next thing you're gonna put on your graph are the temperatures that it gives you in the problem. So in this problem, it says we're going from negative 10 to positive 10. So I'm going to put those temperatures on my graph. Negative 10 would be below here, below my zero. And positive 10 is going to land between the zero degrees and the 100. So if I had to put like a start dot and an end dot on here, I'm starting here and I'm ending here. So for this particular problem, there's going to be three steps. This first part of the graph, this is where I'm melting, uh, excuse me, I'm warming up a solid. That the, it stays a solid the whole time, but the temperature of that solid is changing. Then the next step in my three-step problem is going to be to melt my solid as I go across. And then the third step is going to be, well, I just melted it, now it's a liquid. Now I'm gonna have the temperature of my liquid change. So in this particular problem, we're only gonna have three steps, A, B, and C. There is no step D or E in this particular problem, because in this problem, we never get warm enough for it to boil or turn into a gas. So let's look at just part A, where we're warming up our solid. We said previously that if you're on that section of the graph, that you could use the equation Q equals MC delta T. So for my mass, it says up above that I'm using a five gram piece of ice. In section A of this graph, it's a solid at this time. So we need waters, because we're talking about a piece of ice, right? Ice turning into liquid water. We need waters solid C value. So we go to our chart and we find water. Water's solid C value is right here. 
this 2.1 number. And the units, if you forget them, are up on the top, joules per gram degrees Celsius. So that's the C, 2.1 joules per gram degree Celsius. Now we need the delta T. Now be careful, the delta T is not just negative 10 to positive 10 because it doesn't stay a solid that whole temperature range. So we are doing just part A. We are doing just this section of the graph right here. So we need the temperature change for just section A. Well, the final temperature for section A is zero degrees Celsius. It started at negative 10. So I'm going to do zero minus a negative 10. This guy, if we throw in our calculator, we get 105 joules. I'm not going to do any sig fig rounding yet because really this is one piece of a bigger puzzle. Next up, I'm going to look at how much energy it takes to go across section B on my graph there. So section B, we said that's when our substance is melting. So we can't use our MC delta T equation because there is no delta T. It holds steady at zero degrees that whole time. When we melt, we're going to do mass times heat of fusion. Well, our ice is still 5 grams. The mass of it doesn't change. But now I need water's heat of fusion number. So I go to my chart, and I look up water's heat of fusion number. Here it is, this 335 joules per gram. Put that number into my equation. If I multiply three by, or excuse me, five by 335, you're gonna get 1,675 joules. No sig fig rounding yet, because this is just one piece of a bigger puzzle. And our last step, we're gonna do part C, where we just melted it, it's now a liquid, so we're gonna warm up our liquid. When we're on those climbing parts of the graph, we get to use our Q equals MC delta T equation. Our mass is still going to be 5 grams. Now, because I just melted it in the previous step, I need the liquid C value. So I need water's liquid C value. Here it is, 4.184. I'm going to use that in my equation. Now I need the delta T. For the delta T, I am not going to say negative 10 to positive 10 because it doesn't stay a liquid during that entire temperature range. I'm looking at just section C of the graph, just this green part. And so the temperature ranges during part C, it starts at zero and climbs up to 10 degrees. So my final temperature is 10 my initial is zero. So that part, 209.2 joules. If I wanted to know the total heat to do all of it, to do all three steps, I would have to add together A, B, and C. So I'd add together 105, 1675, and 209.2. If you do that, you'll get the number uh, 1,989.2 joules. Since this is the last time I'd hit my equals button on my calculator, now is where I would sig fig round. Since our last step required us to do some addition, you'll see that on my answer keys, I'm gonna default to those addition rules. So our addition rules say, just to look at decimal places, I have two numbers that don't have decimal places and one that does. So I'm gonna round it to make it match the same number of decimal places as my worst numbers, which didn't have any decimals at all. So I would round it to 1,989 joules. Now, if you did round it to, let's say, 
uh, maybe 2,000 joules because you saw that the mass was five grams and that only has one sig fig, I would be fine with that as well. As long as there's a reason you're rounding it the way you do, I'll be a little bit gentle with sig figs on these because it's kind of a mess. You've got multiplication mixed in with addition and subtraction. So as long as it seems like there's a reason, we'll let it happen.